How's it going? This is your host, Gooby, and welcome to the Toon Balloon Podcast. This podcast is an outlet to discuss, theorize, and enjoy our favorite webtoons with the occasional anime and manga sprinkled in between. For our second episode, I would like to discuss a couple of webtoons that I have been reading lately. To catch you up to speed, I will give a short summary of each comic before diving right into it. The webtoons on the agenda for today will be Lore Olympus, The Remarried Empress, and The Fate of a Rose. Also, there will be spoilers in this episode, so if you have not read the webtoons yet, I would recommend that you go and check them out before coming and listening. <laughs> now, let's get started. First up, we have Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe, episode 138, Shiny Rocks. Here is your recap. The chapter begins with Hades whisking Persephone away onto a rooftop. Hades demonstrates a little hobby of his, golfing with a twist. He strikes a diamond, or a shiny rock, with a golf club. That rock then glides beautifully into the sky. Persephone attempts to do so as well, only to smash the shiny rock into a person's window. The person ends up keeping it, and Hades cannot control his laughter. We end up getting a playful interaction between the two, and it is adorable. Next, we see a delusional Zeus pondering his thoughts after the awful zoo meeting he had with the Olympians. Zeus questions the likelihood of Persephone being a fertility goddess, but brushes it off. Hermes shows up to tell Zeus that he did indeed not fetch Persephone. Hermes is placed on house arrest. Lastly, Minth and Thanatos are having a heated phone call discussing her last encounter with Hades. Thanatos believes Hades has no interest in Minth, which she does not take well, and hangs up the phone. We then see Thanatos glancing up to find Daphne crawling out of a window. Okay, so I like the interpretation of shooting stars in this chapter, which is basically the gods felt like playing golf that day. <laughs> this chapter had unlocked a hidden memory of mine because whenever they were playing golf, it reminded me of the host of Reading Rainbow. I remember an episode where he said that as a way to not get scared of the sound of thunder, he would imagine that it was just God bowling and that he landed a strike. <laughs> I appreciate the flirtatious behavior between Persephone and Hades. The two of them are able to poke fun at each other and laugh. They are practically on the same wavelength. It is a divisive parallel to his last relationship with Minth. I have never seen a scene where both of them were laughing together because I feel like we only saw the two of them fight or they were just walking on eggshells around each other. I'm glad to see that Hades and Persephone can be themselves around each other because they make it easier for one another. Now to talk about Zeus after that wholesome content is a little painful. <laughs> I think this chapter exemplifies a couple of things. One, Zeus has a big head, and two, he's afraid of losing everything. We get a look at Zeus's delusions. His high and mighty attitude is getting in the way of his job and his relationships, which I think we all knew. He has the audacity to demand respect, yet cannot return any to his fellow Olympians, especially to his own siblings or even his wife. I will not be surprised at all if more Olympians decide to turn against him and join Team Persephone. Which, by the way, I need to know where Ares got his Team Persephone shirt because I need one for sure. That phone call between Minth and Thanatos felt fruitless. Minth is desperately grasping for straws of control over Hades. So when she blew up like that, I definitely believe that she is embarking on irredeemable territory. I felt like the character could have been redeemed if she had just respected his choices, but 
after the incident of the last interaction between her and Hades, I felt like we are losing it. <laughs> Seeing Daphne crawl out of that window is a red flag in of itself. I hope that she isn't in any danger because we all know that she is in a relationship with Apollo. And considering his history, he will be as problematic as ever. I also have an inkling that Apollo is desperately trying to cling to Persephone and is using Daphne because they look so similar. I think we may be getting some character development for Thanatos soon because I do find that his character is redeemable. There is potential. I don't think Thanatos is a bad guy. I think he's just mixed up with the wrong people. Hopefully this interaction between him and Daphne will lead to a path to it in future episodes. Alright guys, buckle up because we are going to talk about The Remarried Empress by Alpha Tart and Soompol, episode 34. Now, before we jump into the recap, I wanted to share how I started reading this comic in the first place. So, last week, I got a hold of an old friend, Hey Notion, <laughs> who told me that they also read webtoons. To my excitement, we immediately listed out a bunch of different comics that we read, she mentioned the Remarried Empress, so considering this is the second time that I am hearing about it, I swiftly binged all of the available chapters. This webtoon is good, and I mean good. <laughs> we have a strong female lead and lots and lots of content. Also, I have mad beef with a lot of these characters, and if you do read this webtoon, now let's get into the recap. We begin with a secret meeting between our dear Empress, Navier, and Duchess Tuanya. The former pleads to Navier to help the Viscount avoid the death penalty, or to at least earn him a trial. Navier agrees. Tuanya proceeds to cry with joy and is given a handkerchief from Navier to wipe her tears. The Duchess asks for a hug, and their meeting ends. Navier is then shown to be meeting with the Viscount to collect information. He reveals a trail of information that leads to the Mistress Trasta, I mean Rashta, as the source of the rumors. Navier guarantees his safety, and like the Empress she is, confronts her husband with the evidence. Navier proves time and time again that she is worthy of her title. She is strong-willed and vigilant. I feel this chapter highlights her devotion to her people, and that she will do everything in her power to help them. The Emperor lost out on a true treasure when he decided his ego so desperately needed to be stroked. I feel so bad for the Duchess and the Viscount because they both got into Rashta shenanigans. And speaking of Rashta, I find this convenient stabbing and her pregnancy announcement to be a bit of a ploy. The timing is so narrow and I don't think she is pregnant considering the girl desperately needed money to cover up her secrets already. I feel this is just another shady scheme for her. Not to mention, Duke Urgy just so happens to be the supposed hero in all of her conflicts. Now, Duke Urgy has always been suspicious ever since he punched a random person for Rashta a couple chapters back. Prince Henry has even warned Navier of his wickedness as well. Although, and hear me out, I think Urgy is just one piece of a large puzzle that is Prince Henry's plan. Back in episode 14, Prince Henry sends a letter to the Duke and calls it his covert plan. And at the time, it looked like the fruition to his scheme. I am still trying to understand what this scheme could be from the hints we have gotten throughout the story, but we do know that his country has been gathering intel for years. I'd assume the kingdom has plans to sabotage. My theory is that Urgy is supposed to gain the trust of the emperor in order to set the plan in motion. As for the confrontation between the emperor, Sylvia Shu, and Navier, I can guarantee it will be heated. I am so excited to see her put him in his place. She is always so elegant and poised, and it will make him cower. <music> Lastly, we have The Fate of a Rose by Sushi Cat Go, episode 41. 
Now, this is one of the Canvas webtoons I mentioned last episode. After I uploaded that first episode, much to my pleasant surprise, the author updated that night. Now, this series has a different upload schedule since it isn't an original, but it deserves lots of love, so check it out. Now, here is your recap. We start with Amy walking in on Dee Dee, or shall we say Gloria, fuming over the lack of Akita's necklace. Amy tries to convince her that Akita might have changed. This comment opens a Pandora's box of emotions within Dee Dee, who begins spiraling. As a way to get her to snap out of it, Amy refers to her as Gloria. The name unleashes outlandish behavior out of Dee Dee, since she detests the name. After some threats from Dee Dee, Amy eventually apologizes. Dee Dee begins to convince Amy that the incidents she suffered with Akita were terrible, in fact, immeasurable, in comparison to others. The next scene focuses on Pierce reflecting the encounter he had with Didi, whom he does not know, several chapters ago. Xander is still uninformed of the type of bleeding Akita is dealing with and brought over some bandages. Pierce tells Xander to look out for this woman as he has grown suspicious of her. This episode has lots of examples of toxic behavior. I found Dee Dee's explosive outbursts to be telling of her insecurities. The toxicity is high, definitely, but I wanted to dive deeper on why she would even react this way. After Amy called her Gloria, she snapped. We can assume she is hiding a past name or even a past life. To understand, we will talk about Amy first. Amy's history with Akita revolves around the two stepping into influencer culture and witnessing their friendship falling apart. The two of them joined a beauty company Amy's parents owned, named Bo. Out of the two, Akita had star quality and became the face of Bo. The fight the two of them had in the flashbacks back in chapter 39 revealed that Akita told Amy that she didn't look the part, that Amy had to seek a new way to be a part of Bo, and that was through Akita. Amy is apparently unrecognizable to Akita now. I would assume Amy wanted to fit in to the beauty standards of Bo and has gone through some makeovers to alter her appearance. My theory is that Gloria was an identity Dee Dee disassociated herself with after seeking to join Bo. Gloria didn't look the part. She couldn't be the face of Bo, unlike Akita. Akita is who Dee Dee idolizes heavily and she has been hunting for her to revive Bo, something she so desperately wants and will manipulate or harm anyone who gets in her way. I don't know what the Dee Dee and Coveta incident exactly was, since the hints to it have been vague so far, but it is referred to with devastation. I hope to uncover more about these characters and more about the history between these three women, a confrontation is inevitable, and it seems Pierce may have an interaction with Dee Dee in the future. Considering his suspicions of her already, I look forward to it. <laughs> also, will someone tell Xander that Akita isn't bleeding in a bandageable way, so to speak? <laughs> a for effort, though. It just shows that he cares. My thoughts for these chapters we got this week were very positive. They moved the story forward. I am so thankful for these artists for producing such wonderful pieces of work. I will be sure to leave a link to any of their social media pages, their webtoons, and I will make sure to leave a link down below to any of the artists' different methods of support. I was anticipating to discuss more webtoons this episode, but I was on a bit of a time crunch since I start school next week. I am looking forward to the next episode because we will be talking about the newest episode of Attack on Titan that comes out this week, along with another webtoon or two. So hopefully I can get it uploaded by Friday. I'm hoping after that we can have another webtoon episode or I will include some webtoons in that next episode of mine. Let me know your thoughts or opinions of any of the comics we discussed today by messaging me through either of my social media handles. My Twitter handle is gr2n cheddar, and my Instagram is insert underscore gooby underscore here. I would love to hear from you. 
Also, definitely tell me any of your favorite comics, anime, or manga you're interested in. I may be able to talk about them in future episodes. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time to listen to my humble podcast. I look forward to talking with you again. This is the Toon Balloon Podcast. I was your host, Gooby. See you next time.